Okay, I decided to make a, a small series of uh, botanical videos for my channel. This is the first in the series. Um, it's not that I want to hold myself out as a gardening guru or anything but. I'm more um, wanting to uh, see if any of the experts out there can uh, spot any tragedies in the making uh, in my, uh, on my balcony here. Um, this of course uh, also will help me see how, how much exactly various things have changed. The biological changes that have happened in plants, as IAS 41 puts it. Um, and uh, of course at the moment we have the 15th of April, just for reference. Uh, that being the middle of April for most people. April being the month which is known as Nissan in the uh, Japanese car industry. Uh, what we have here is the um, the common sea buckthorn and it still has these almost dried up fruits on it from last season. They're actually uh, good to use uh, to produce various alcoholic beverages it's from vodka and, and other things like that which are flavoured with these things. They taste a bit like pineapples. I didn't really use it last year so it's all on still on there. Uh, in Russian this is called ablipicha, this common sea buckthorn and in Polish it's called Rokitnik and uh, basically it's got these sort of pleasant little leaves growing on it at the moment. In this little pot down here I've got a couple of different types of uh, barberry bush. One of them is well back, already starting to thrive. The other one seems to be just getting the first little um, very dark purplish leaves on it if you can see there. I think that's Atropurpurea. Here's another uh, this is the male, it doesn't take berries, um, buckthorn, just coming back with tiny leaves. These leaves all get quite nice and uh, olive looking um, over the course of the next few weeks. Some of the branches simply don't have anything coming back and probably I'll lop them off or prune them um, if by you know the next few weeks they haven't got anything on it. The whole of this branch doesn't have anything, the whole of that doesn't, it seems to want to grow more upwards this tree so probably the bits that have died I'll probably take away so that there's uh, more concentration on the ears which you have. This one's the big female with the uh, plenty of berries on it but I can't see so far any single leaves coming back on it which is a bit of a tragedy. There are some buds but they don't seem to be really pushing forward very quickly. I don't know why that is. Um, maybe it's dead. It's always possible have to find that out. If, if it hasn't done anything in the next few weeks I'll have to basically throw it out, which would be a pity because that was my biggest of these buckthorns and it was doing well last year so why exactly the others should live and this one die I have no idea. Here we have another one of these barberry bushes just coming back with very fine spikes all over it. It's an excellent spiky one there. Um, which, you know, if I manage to propagate it a bit, it would do very well for infrastructure planting later. This is a Euonymus. This is a Corylus, which is the your hazelnut. These are the flowers which came in early this year, and apparently they turn to nuts later. It's probably good for an accountant to have one of these. And um, these are the buds for the leaves to come out shortly afterwards. So it's all twisty, it's a twisty version, specially made or bred or whatever to have this twisty effect. This is Viburnum Picatum, which my daughter chose last last um, uh, autumn. We just put it in to see if it would uh, be nice next year. And this is what you call a, a Kalinka. Uh, so it's, uh, it's this... Uh, thing that the song Kalinka in Russian is all about, the Gelder Rose. So um, there's a normal rose and another normal rose and another normal rose which are all happily three, all three of them coming back after the winter. This is a dogwood with a very pleasant red um, colour to the wood which is something to look at even in the winter and quite pleasant, you know, almost minty looking leaves, lovely bright green leaves at the moment. I mean, dogwood can get very out of control, etc., but uh, this one won't seems to be very, very nice. And of course, in a pot, you're not going to get it going out of control. So, um, 
another barberry bush and a green barberry bush and another euonymus in the middle of this pot. Walking round, more roses. That's a that's a gooseberry just coming up back very fast actually from the winter. And that rose is looking very nice at this point, glowing almost I would say, the leaves on that. Just now we've put we we planted uh, five Japanese tree peonies the other day, and here they are uh, in their pots. And here's a juniper which we repotted yesterday. Let's see over the rest of the. Uh, this is the area which I don't look after. I tried looking after it, but they told me off for it. So uh, apparently I'm not supposed to plant anything of mine amongst this, these common parts. They told me off for doing that, made me take them all back again, which is a bit unfortunate. One of the things I had over there, which I was hoping to share with everybody, I mean, my intentions were good, is this lovely lilac. And at the moment, this lilac is coming back very quickly, very nicely from its winter rest. You can see some very promising flower buds on there. And uh, for reference, that's the pot that it's in. It's been in that over winter. Um, what's this? This dry thing here is buddlier. I took the risk of letting it winter outside, but it's obviously not uh, been happy about that, and I don't think I'm going to get it back. I'm still keeping it in there just in case, though, for a couple more weeks. Uh, other things which didn't survive the winter I've already chucked out. Um, this thing here is a uh, ficus which has had been indoors and had almost all the leaves removed by my daughter. And there's one leaf in the middle of that thicket and the, which is still surviving, so hopefully bringing it out here putting it amongst other plants so she won't really get her hands on it. I don't know why she likes taking leaves off things. I keep on telling her not to, but she still goes back the minute my back's turned and takes the leaves off. And this is a, a yucca, but it's again, it's very scrappy. It's been defoliated as well because it's been indoors over the winter. That's one of the reasons why... I think it's your daughter. Yeah, where's my daughter? Look, green. Oh, she's over there in the distance. I, I, I yeah. need to be able to zoom. I can't zoom while I'm filming, but I can walk <laughs> up to her. This is the botanist we're talking about. It never stops. She can't leave plants alone, but when, when plants are outside, she's got a great big choice of plants to, to sort of like butcher. So she can't leave them alone. There she goes. That's Tanya. She's, a, she's like um, a born botanist. She just has got to be on plants the whole time. Hi. Did you find anything nice? What you got in your hand there? Some piece of plant that you've managed to pluck off. And she does that all winter, of course, which is why, and whatever I ask her not to do, she, she, she won't keep off it for too long, which is why the plants inside the house get really brutally murdered. This is the reason why I winter more stuff outside than than, um, than I would otherwise. This is a pyracanthus, which has survived nicely its second winter outside. Some, some leaves have gone um, a bit brown and horrible, but uh, others are still there and looking, you know, the thing feels alive. And I think it's going to come back nicely. And uh, hopefully put some growth on over the course of this period. I asked to have this turned into a standard and the gardener went and did the opposite of what I wanted so it's now stupidly pruned straight across the top and all of this growth down here is still down there. He, he just obviously didn't understand what I meant by turning it into a standard. I think people don't know what you mean. They don't ask you, well what does that mean? They just go ahead and sort of mess things up anyway. So this is what I've got basically and along the ledge here is a coffee plant a ficus which has not been that badly disfoliated. We managed to get it up here in the time. In time, a zebra plant which is actually not liking that full sun too much. We might have to do something about that. And uh, there's a rose which is starting to come back. There's a begonia. This very fine dra dracaena, dracaena or whatever you call it. That's what we've got on the ledge. Oh, and here's my olive which was very lucky to, to survive because it was indoors, of course. I didn't, didn't manage to get that many leaves taken off it, so that was lucky. It's been with me quite a few years, so I wouldn't like to lose that one. 